Hello, dear students. Let's solve some more questions on graph and minimum cost spanning tree. Now, this question I have picked up from one of the textbooks. There is an undirected graph G. Check that graph is undirected and it has n nodes. And its adjacency matrix is given by n cross n square matrix. Obviously, <laughs> graph is always represented by its adjacency matrix and it is square matrix whose, whose diagonal elements are 0 and non diagonal elements are 1s. What that means is if you have a 4 by 4 matrix, that means you have you have 4 vertices, correct? Then all the elements, non diagonal elements are 1, but except diagonal elements, diagonal elements are 0. This is what they mean. So, do you understand that this is a, sorry, this is a complete graph? Yes. Every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. That is what they say. Because only diagonal elements are 0. But 1 is adjacent to 2, 1 is adjacent to 3, 1 is adjacent to 4, and 4 is adjacent to all, 3 is adjacent to all. So, it's a complete graph. Although they did not use the word complete undirected graph, this word was missing. But because all non diagonal elements are 0, are 1s, you easily know that every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. And you also check that the weights are 1. What they are saying is weights are 1. For example, if you draw this graph, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 vertices, then weight between every, weight between every vertex is 1. That's what adjacency matrix means, isn't it? Now the question asked is, which one of the following is true? The graph G has no minimum spanning tree. That's impossible, isn't it? For any connected graph, you will always have some minimum cost spanning tree. Come on. This cannot be true. This is false. Graph G has unique minimum cost spanning tree uh, of cost n minus 1. Now check this word unique. No, this graph has many minimum cost spanning trees. For example, you would say I will connect 1 and 2 with weight 1, 1 and 3 with weight 1, and 3 and 4 with weight 1. Finished. Now you can't add any more edge in this. There will be a cycle. So what is the, what is the cost? Total cost? 3. 1 plus 1 plus 1. Obviously, in a 4 vertex graph, you can add only 3 edges and every edge is having weight 1. So, 3 will be the cost. But then this is not the only tree, isn't it? They are saying there will be unique minimum cost spanning tree. What you may do is, you will connect 1 and 4. Why not? 1 and 4. Then 4 and 3. Yes, with a weight 1. And 4 and 2 with a weight 1. See, these two are proper trees. Minimum cost trees and the weight of both trees is 3. So, although you will get minimum cost spanning tree with cost n minus 1, yes, cost of the minimum spanning tree will be n minus 1. As in the case of 4 vertices, we got the cost as 3, but it's not unique, isn't it? So, even this is false. Graph G has multiple distinct minimum spanning trees, each of cost n minus 1. This is true. Watch it again. You may have first tree like this 1 to 2 with a cost 1, 1 to 3 with 1, and 3 to 4 with 1. This is one of the trees. And the cost is n minus 1, that is 3. Check. But the other tree possible is 1 to 4 with a cost 1, 4 to 2 with a cost 1, and 4 to 3 with a cost 1. There is no cycle in this tree also. And there can be many such trees. And each tree is distinct, different from, check the topology of this tree, left, right hand side tree and left hand side tree. Topologies are different, they are different trees. So multiple distinct mul minimum spanning trees are possible, each of cost n minus 1. And the fourth option is graph G has multiple spanning trees of different cost, impossible. Whatever minimum cost spanning tree you construct will contain three edges because there are four vertices. That's what we have assumed, n is 4. And any minimum cost spanning tree you construct, there will be definitely the cost will be 3, isn't it? So different costs is impossible. In fact, I tried it with 4 vertices. During gate exam, it would be better that you try only with 3 vertices, isn't it? With 3 vertices, if you check, weight of each edge is 1, correct? Then 
graph g has no minimum spanning tree is impossible it will have a minimum spanning tree and graph g will have unique minimum spanning tree is not possible because 1 to 2 is possible and 2 to 3 is possible that's it that's it now you can't connect 1 and 3 you will get a cycle here isn't it so what is the cost of this tree cost of this tree is 2 which is indeed number of vertices minus 1 n minus 1 but then other tree possible is you can connect 1 and 3 with a weight 1 and 3 and 2 with a weight 1 these two trees are different that means you can get multiple trees unique tree is not possible so option c is correct option d is wrong because you can't get multiple spanning trees with different cost cost of any tree will be n minus 1 i hope you got this particular point now let's see gate 2000 question very interesting just check in gate 2000 the question asked was let g be a undirected connected graph now by connected graph what we mean is not necessarily complete i repeat connected graph means that there is only one connected component in the graph for instance if if i show some graph like this one two three this is this is how it looks like and four five six check this graph now this graph has six vertices that is what we are saying this graph has six vertices and this entirely is a one graph of six vertices but note there is nothing between these two components there is no edge between these two components there is an ocean between these two continents then we say this graph is not connected why because there are two components this is component one one two three and this is component two four five six correct but what if what if suppose i show some edge from two to four here now you see this graph has single component previously it had two different components now this has only one component single component so this is connected graph because you can go from any vertex now you can go from any vertex to any other vertex in this graph okay so that's what they are saying what what is given to us undirected connected graph with distinct edge weights check every word properly distinct edge weights that means every every weight is distinct weights of any of the edges is not repeated okay and let e max be the edge with maximum weight and e min be the edge with minimum weight like up in this in this if i show five six seven these are the weights then e max is five to six check e max is e max is this this edge this is the edge e max and e min is this one to two one to two with minimum weight okay then which one of the following is false they are asking so i'll just erase the slate now i hope you got the point about the question here so which one of these following are false every every minimum spanning tree of g every minimum spanning tree of g contains e min oh what a point this has to be true come on when we construct a minimum spanning tree we always take that edge which has minimum weight so edge having minimum weight has to be there in every minimum spanning tree there is no question about it so this cannot be false they are asking who is false in this okay now check the fourth option g has unique minimum spanning tree listen every edge is weight is distinct now if every weight is distinct definitely you will have only unique spanning tree think over it think over it what if what if we have we have say four vertices four vertices okay and the weights are like this one one two two now the weights are not unique distinct they are they have said that they have given distinct edge weights now there won't be unique but there will be many spanning trees many minimum spanning trees are you understanding you can take one to two which is minimum correct one to two is minimum one to three is minimum yes i agree and two to four can be connected with a weight two but four to three now cannot be connected because it will create a cycle but you will say why sir you have connected one to two agreed you have connected one to three agreed but you could have connected three to four with a weight two 
and don't connect two and four with a weight two. So aren't there multiple trees? Isn't it? Because the weights are repeated, you can get multiple trees. But what if weights are distinct? Think over it. If the weights are distinct, then you will always get unique, only single minimum spanning tree you will get. So claim D is true, claim A is true. Let's see option B. If Emacs is a minimum spanning tree, then its removal must disconnect G. Now this seems to, a, to be a very difficult option to check. So let's check option C. No minimum spanning tree contains Emacs. Oh, I think this kind can be kind of easy option to check first of all. No minimum spanning tree contains Emacs. So what you can do is, you can construct some, some graph like this. Just check this. Suppose we have unique, unique weights, one, two, three, four, correct? And we have two to five, observe this, two to five with the weight five. And now five does not have any edge to any other, any other, any other vertex. Now tell me, isn't this, isn't this two to five maximum weight, isn't it? Two to five is maximum weight. Yes. And they are asking, absolutely no minimum spanning tree can ever have Emacs. But this spanning tree will have Emacs because you will connect one and three with a weight one, then one and two with a weight two, obviously, then two and th four with a weight three, and you won't connect three and four with a weight four, it will cause a cycle, but then you have to connect two and five. What do you say? With a weight five, otherwise how will five come into the tree, isn't it? So Emacs is present in the tree. They are saying absolutely it is impossible. No minimum spanning tree contains Emacs. So this option is false. They are asking which option is false, isn't it? It can happen that Emacs is there in the minimum spanning tree. And one of such examples we have seen over here, isn't it so? I hope you are understanding what I am talking about clearly. What about option B, but option B? How can we ignore it? We can't solve a gate questions without saying that, okay, option B is a bit difficult. Let's not check it. The question is, in option B is, if Emacs is in the minimum spanning tree, then its removal must disconnect G, is the question asked. Now you see Emacs is there. Emacs is there, isn't it? See this? See this? 2 to 5? 2 to 5 is connected. And what if I remove this Emacs from the tree? If I remove this, then watch, vertex number five is going to get disconnected, isn't it? And then we are going to have no, no relation between this one, two, three, four, and five. So it is, its removal must disconnect G is the correct option. If Emacs is the minimum spanning tree, yes. If Emacs is in the tree, and we had this Emacs in the tree, isn't it? Two to five was there in the tree. And removing it will disconnect the graph. And that means option B is correct. Option C is false. No minimum spanning tree ever contains Emacs. Emacs can be there in the minimum spanning tree. The weight, the maximum weight can be there in the minimum spanning tree. I hope you got this perfectly. Let's see gate 2006 question. Let's see what the question says is, I think I have not written this question properly. It can't be a question on three vertices. Let's see. Such small number of vertices gate people will never give. Let's see what. Consider a weighted complete graph. Again, it is a complete graph G on vertex set V1, V2. Maybe in the question they have V4 up to Vn. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to check this. Okay. Such that, and it's a graph is complete, observe again. So every vertex is connected to every other vertex. Such that weight of the edge V, W is 2 into i minus j. So what that means is, suppose if I take only three vertices, imagine, only three vertices. Let's start with very small graph. And it is a complete graph, isn't it? So every vertex is connected to every other vertex. So what will be the weight between 1 to 2? Weight between 1 to 2 will be 2 into absolute value of 1 minus 2. That is i minus j. So that will be 2 into absolute value of 1 minus 2 is 1. So weight will be 2 here. That means difference between the vertex numbers into 2. So difference between 1 and 3 is 2. 2 into 2 is 4. Difference between 3 and 2 is 1. 1 into 2 is 2. 
this is the graph we have got now what they are asking is weight of the minimum spanning tree of g is what is it they are asking out of four options now it is clear that this tree is going to have one to two and it is going to have two to three correct and it will not contain one to three as the weight is larger so the so the cost of this minimum spanning tree is four isn't it and let's see in which option does it fit three minus one number of vertices minus one is not four two n minus two observe that is two into two into three minus two six minus two four fits what about this nc2 nc2 here means 4c2 and 4c2 is 4 just check that i think so 4c 4c 4c2 4 3 2 1 4 factorial upon 2 factorial 4 minus 2 factorial 2 factorial is 2 into 2 factorial so this will be 6 i am so sorry 4c2 is 6 and 2 is obviously invalid how can it be always 2 so option b is correct 2n minus 2 is the answer you can further further improve your answer very quickly by drawing a four vertex graph why not if it is a two marks question you can always afford to do that for example if you draw a four vertex graph which will be a complete graph then every vertex will be connected to every other vertex correct so there are six edges but the weight will be two because one minus two is one into two 1 minus 3 is 2, 2 into 2, 4. This is 1 minus 4, that is 3. 3 into 2 is 6. This will be 2, just check it. 3 minus 2 is 1, so this will be 2, and this will be 4. Now, what will be the tree for this? The minimum weights are 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. Correct? These are the minimum weights, and obviously, 3 to 2 is also minimum with a weight 2. Observe. Correct? I hope you are understanding. Then in that case, this is this is the tree. Because in a four vertex graph, we can add only three edges. And then only we will get the tree. So the cost is six. Two plus two plus six. Two plus two plus two. So does two n minus one fit here? Yes, two into four minus two, eight minus two is six. But n minus one doesn't fit because four minus one is not equal to six. Even n c two does not fit because if you if you calculate 4c2, it's not give you the answer. Uh, 4c2 is going to be, I think, 4c2 is also going to be 6. Yes, 6. So this these two options are coming out to be correct. But for a three vertex graph, for a three vertex graph, you observe 3c2 did not work, isn't it? Just check, just check again. Three vertex graph, which was complete. We had two, then four, then two. And this 4 was not there in the tree. So the cost was 4. And cost was 4. So 2n minus 2 nicely fits in this. But nc2, that is 3c2, is just 3. It doesn't fit in this particular formula. So b is the correct option, 2n minus 2. You can also check it for a 5 vertex graph, isn't it? For a 5 vertex graph, what happens? For a 4 vertex graph, we have checked. The cost is 6. And we were confused between b and c option. Because even 4c2 is 6. But then when we checked it for three vertex graph, 3C2, NC2, 3C2 is just three. I hope you are understanding, isn't it? 3C2 is just three and it, it is not equal to four. So indeed B is the correct option. Anyway, I, I leave it to you. You can confirm it with five vertex graph also. Here I did a small blunder because when I was working earlier with three vertex graph while checking this option C, I checked 4C2. Sorry for that. Actually, 4C2 is 6. And we, I said uh, while checking for 3 vertex graph, option B is correct. But I hope you have understood. Lots of ifs and buts. But surely B is the answer. Thank you very much.